sit in the seat or place of my big brother, Pastor Mark Tony. Amen. Amen. Before I get started, I'm going to sing this little piece of song. The songwriter said, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there. Amen. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, 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 oh
God is good. Yes, all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Amen. All the time. All the time. Amen. God is good. We serve a perfect God. Amen. He is perfect. And he'll never fail you. Amen. Let us stand and read the word of God from Exodus. We're going to read in chapter 14. It's going to be chapter 14, verse 14 and 15. Amen. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 and 15. Anybody don't know where Exodus is? The second book of the Bible. I want to clear that up. Easy. Amen? Amen. All right. Here's what it said. It said, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. You may be seated. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray you bless this bread, Lord God, that we're about to receive for the nourishment of our spiritual bodies as well as our natural. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let everybody say amen. 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 The title of the message this morning is, or this afternoon, The Lord Will Fight for You. The Lord Will Fight for You. You ain't got time to fight your mouth. Because that's what we got God for. Now that's what you say. See, we need God to fight. Amen. Because sometimes, amen, you can get into a scrapple with the devil. And I'm telling you now, he will kick your butt. But not with Jesus. If you got Jesus on your side, you can win. Amen. And I like what he said in verse 15. If you know that you got Jesus on your side, he asked Moses, he said, What for or why? Cries down to me. Speak unto the children of Israel that they go where? Forward. But you can't go forward unless you believe. People struggle trying to go forward. Amen. They're always looking back in the rearview mirror. Amen. But there's a scripture in the word of God that says, remember Lot's wife. She didn't go for it. The Bible says she looked back and became a pillar of salt. See, sometimes when you look back in the past, you become a pillar of salt. Stop. In time. Amen. In time. So we got to be believing to move forward. Amen. You have to learn to let go of some things. Sometimes we can't let go of stuff. God will tell you to let go of some stuff that is really not even sin. See, it might not even be a sin. I had to let go of some things. When he put me away. He 14 years. Put me away. And he told me to stop doing stuff. That to me was not And when God tells you to stop doing something, that really is something. If you do it, then it becomes sin. Because you're disobeying. You see, I was taking seriously of church things when I was put away, locked up. And I took care of some church stuff in there. Uh -huh. And I was receiving, they were sending donations and things, helping me out. Uh -huh. And when they were sending these donations, I was going and buying little CDs and stuff for myself. Uh -huh. for you. And I, I, I used to like love songs, you know? Uh -huh. R&B and stuff like that. Nah, I still like it. But now, I, I, when it was, I liked it more than I loved God. My love for that was more than God. And I was paying too much of stock into that. But God said, I don't want you listening to that right now. Why don't you put it down? But I still was listening to it. I couldn't hardly see. I, 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 like, I, was, I got an old soul. See, I like old R&B. I used to like them love. Somebody know what I'm talking about. 
I used to like uh, that old, what was that, Luther Vandross song. What did he say? One look in your eyes, there I see all that you need to me. Oh, I couldn't, man, I love that stuff. Oh, I remember that. Preach me. Preach me. like that. See, God said, now, I don't want to. I said, I got to have it. I went order analysis. <laughs> you know? Don't you remember you told me <laughs> to do that? You said you'd be coming back as well. But the Lord got me for that. Come on, put that stuff down. Guess what? I ain't getting no more donations. <laughs> now, <Nah. laughs> you got to be obedient. You got to obey. He said obedience. It's better than sacrifice. Amen. You got to be obedient to what God is telling you. What you compromise to keep, you're going to eventually lose. You can't make no compromises with the devil and expect to win. You're going to lose all of that stuff. Amen. What you're willing to walk away from, you're a master. You master those things. You learn how to walk away from stuff. Some people can't walk away from everything. You talking about houses, cars. You might have to walk away from a person, a single individual. You got to get them out of your life. Some people can't walk away from houses, and it is hard. You know, you got to go into what a foreclosure. Nobody won't walk away from houses. Now I just, you been in this house? I've been in this house. I can't walk away from it. Go broke. Be messed all up, scared to walk away from it. Not believing that you can move forward with God. See, with God, all things are possible. See? All things are possible. Not some things. He said all things. You got to be able to walk away. You got to be able to have a backbone and say no. Say no to some things. And you got people in your life that you know supposed to be in your life. You got to say no. Uh -uh, get on away from me. Certain people, I just can't be around. I ain't trying to go to jail. No, no, no. You got to stay away. That's the way it was. I had to go away from I, I remember I was in prison. I had to get away from cigarettes. Nah, 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 nah. I was just saying I had to get away from cigarettes. I could keep smoking or stop smoking. So I stop smoking. Sometimes you got to consider yourself when you stop smoking because you could get so excited and then trying to tell somebody else what to do. As soon as I stopped, I felt so good and proud. You know, I started throwing stones at my friend. I said, come on out here. We went out in the rec yard. Man. I said, come here, man. Let me tell you, man, you need to stop smoking. Stop smoking them cigarettes. And he said, no, no, listen, uh, Brother Tony, you got Man, you, 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 the Lord blessed you and stuff. I need a little bit more time. I said, man, you better put that thing down, man. He was smoking one of them black and mild. I said, you, you better stop it. I mean, the Lord, the Bible said that you could. And that thing smelled good. Man, that thing, I mean, that's black and mild, boy. That can smell good sometimes. And I just was new at stopping for us. I said, now put it down, man. He said, man, I just need a little bit more time. Oh, was this going back? I said, man, I said, man let me hit that thing. <laughs> we both were smoking. It took me two years to get recovered from this. Couldn't be delivered. So you better start thinking about yourself before you start throwing stones at people. Consider yourself. Amen. When you learn to overcome, is when you'll be promoted. See, God will promote you if you learn how to get the victory. So you can't do it on your own. When you learn to overcome is when you'll be promoted. Jesus said in, I think, John 16, 33, he said, in the world you will have tribulation. He said, but I be of good cheer. I have overcome what? The world. So if he did it, we can do it. Why? Because he gives you Amen. But people make mistakes, you know. Amen. That's one thing you can count on uh, in this world. Amen. That people are going to make mistakes. Amen. 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 People are going to make mistakes. Amen. 
We learned that. Hey Amen. See, see, George Zimmerman is not a person. Okay. <laughs> but the Lord will fight for you. Amen. Amen. Folks, if you need a way of escape, uh -huh. the Bible says that God provides a way of escape. Amen. He said he will not put you through a temptation uh -huh. that you're not able to bear. But with the temptation, we'll make a way of escape. He's going to give you a fire escape. Amen. You will be able to go through whatever God allows you to go through. But the point is to move forward. That's right. Learn how to move forward. He said the Lord shall fight for you. Yeah. Amen. And you got to know that God is a good fighter. I thought Mike Tyson was back. But God is bad. He's got the belt and he can win anytime. See, the devil's already defeated. See? We shouldn't be losing to him. How do you lose to him? Why? Because we just sitting there. See? The Christian just sitting around, not doing nothing. The devil using your power to whoop on you. See? But you see, though, look at these other religions. They're not even serving the real God. They're not even serving the real God. Uh -huh. And some of them don't bear lust. Uh -huh. All right, now. Anytime you believe in, in a deity or something, yes, sir. Yes, sir. and you're going to take a plane and crash it into a building uh -huh. for the deity over there, man? Uh -huh. okay. Ooh. <laughs> but I can't put down my cigarette. Uh -huh. Shoot, they love other people. People don't want to do nothing for love. Uh, we got to be able to take a bigger step than what we're taking. We're not, we need to do more because we love God. Yes, not because people want you. Amen. See, some people serve God just because people want you. You see me? You see? The Bible says you already got your reward. We got to let God fight for us. If it's something that's standing in your way, you got to allow the Lord to take it out of the way. The Bible says that God gives you this small thing called faith. That very small thing can move mountains. The Bible says, if you got something, you got to have something. You got to have faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says you can't walk by what you say. It says we walk not by. It. What does it say? All right, we walk by faith. Not by sight. So you can't walk off what you. You can't go off what you see. You can't go off that. You will see something like you know what? I can't do it. We can't go into the promised land. We can't get back. Mm -mm. There's too many people down there, and we like little grasshoppers to them. We can't go down and take the promised land. It was, they was all scared. Except a couple of men. I think one of them was Caleb. Was that his name? Yeah. This is a story in the Bible. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But God is able to do exactly what he says he did. Yeah. Amen. You might be going through a struggle, but let me tell you something. God will answer your prayers. Yeah. See, I know, amen, because I remember a story in the Bible about King Ahab. King Ahab was an evil king. And Ahab didn't like doing what was right in the sight of God. He didn't like what God had to say about him. But one day, amen, he wanted to go take a city. He said, you know what, man? I'm ready to fight this battle. I'm going to fight these people. Let me go on down here to Judah and call that King uh, Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat was a nice guy. He always served the Lord. But King Ahab, king of Israel, didn't. So he went to King Jehoshaphat, a man that always serves the Lord, and said, look, Jehoshaphat, man, what's up, man? Come on, man, let's go on down here, man. We can really take this land, man. Them people down at Raymond Gilead, man, they some suckers, man. Let's get on down there, man, and take that. We're going to take it from them, man. Let's take it. Jehoshaphat said, well, I'll tell you what, let's pray. Let's talk to God about it. <laughs> the king Ahab said, no problem. I got like 400 prophets, man. I got 400, call them all one prophet. Then all these prophets yes, sir. Yes, sir. said, yeah, man, it's, it's cool, man. Go on down there. You all right. You cool. Go on down there. You going to win. Everyone, one at a time. 
gonna win, yeah, you gonna win, yeah, you gonna win, yeah, you gonna win, yeah. Left, I, I get something from you. Mm, mm, I think the Lord is talking to me now. Yeah, yeah you gonna get it. Yeah. Mm, I feel, oh, Lord says it. Yeah. And then Jehoshaphat, being a man of God, seen all those guys say, wait a minute now. There's got to be somebody else around this place. And he said, yeah, it is somebody else. But the Bible even says that I hate him. He said, it's another guy that I hate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He never got nothing good to say about me. When it comes to prophesying. But I call him. They call his name was Micaiah. And so the, the boys went down to go get him. They went to get my guy. And they told my guy, hey man, dig this, brother. Now, uh, everybody's saying everything. Uh, you know what I'm saying? If they're trying to ask you everything, go down there, man. Get it. And just say, yeah, man. When you get down there, just say, yeah. It'll be cool. We'll just say, yeah, man. And they're trying to coach him on what to say. And he said, listen, Harry. What the Lord tells me to say, as the Lord liveth, I'm going to say what God told me to say. But he was trying to coach. I remember one time my sister, Lana, she's back there. Uh, I used to stay out too late. And the daddy said, my father said, now you got to be in now at a certain time. Maybe about 8, 30, 9, or whatever, sometimes the street lights. Okay? And I'd be down there playing football with my cousin David. And I'm throwing football. Man, time went so by. Here come my sister. And just in the Bible, when a prophet is coming, you know you're going to be in some trouble or something. Or something. God got a good word for you. But when I saw my sister, Moses on up the street, we throwing the football. I looked over my sister. I said, oh, oh, man. What is it? Daddy wants you. Oh, no. You know, that's a whooping. I'm getting a whooping when I get home. But as we walked home, she was coaching me and went to say, she was like, all you got to say is you just, you just forgot. <laughs> I was like, she was going to get a whooping now. <laughs> but she tried to coach me. I think I got a whooping that day. <laughs> but they tried to coach Micaiah and tell him, but he said, no, I'm going to tell what God told me to say. Amen. And he got down there and he told the people what God told him to say. And he got smacked by another prophet. Prophet Amen. smacked him. Bam! I'm saying, when did the Holy Ghost leave me and go into you? What is you talking about? <laughs> and King Ahab was so mad that the God told him that he would get destroyed if he went to Raymond Gilead. The prophet said, man, you're going to die if you go to Raymond Gilead. You can't go down there. Uh, and, and he said, man, shut up. He said, man, lock this dude up, man. Feed him with bread of affliction and water of affliction uh -huh. until I come back in peace. Uh -huh. And the prophet, before he left, he said, wait a minute. He said, if you come back in peace, the Lord didn't speak to me at all. Uh -huh. They said, man, shut up. Uh -huh. you know, he went down there to fight. Uh -huh. Got popped. Uh -huh. They killed him. Uh -huh. They had to let my guy out. Like, man, he was right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But God fought yes, sir. against Ahab. Because Ahab was evil. Yes, he always did wrong in the sight of the Lord. Amen. And some people today, even sitting in the church, they do wrong yeah. in the sight of God. Yeah. At all times. Yeah. But God wants you to move forward. forward. Yeah. forward. When you walk with him. Come on, yeah. now. He don't want you to play around. Amen. He wants you to be serious Amen. when you walk with him. Amen. Come on, Amen. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. This is a story in the book of Genesis in chapter 5. It said Enoch walked with God and he was not, meaning nobody could find him anymore. For God had took him as he did Elijah and he never saw death. You see, I walked with God when I was in prison and I was not because God took me. Nobody could find me anymore. Amen. Amen. Talking about the old me. Amen. Because I was changed. You couldn't find me no more. Somebody said, I know I've been changed. Angels in heaven don't sign my name. He said, if you don't believe that I've been in heaven no sign my name God had signed my name in heaven Woo, it feels good because 
because you will feel it on you when God finds your name in heaven. You will know, amen, that God is on your side. Amen. How many know that God is on your side? Touch your neighbor and say, God is on my side. Amen. Because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you ever asked or think. You see, God will fight your battle. Amen. If you just walk with Him and if you just talk with Him, God will come to you and he'll tell you exactly what to do. I know, amen, that God is good because when I walk with God, he showed me things that I've never seen in my life, things that I knew I couldn't do. I just said, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to trust in the Lord with all of my heart. And I had to do something that everybody can do. I had to not lean to my own understanding. And him alone. Folks, if you need an escape, God will give you a way out. There's some people in here today that need a way out of a situation that you're in. But I'm telling you that if you just depend on God and in the word of his word, amen, God will take you out of darkness and bring you into his marvelous light. Amen. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Sometimes we think it's according to our purpose, but it's according to God's purpose. And if you depend on him, he'll save you. There's some people in here that are not saved. And you know if you die tonight, you would not walk into the heavenly host of God's heaven. Amen. You will walk down into the gates of hell. And I don't want to go there. And I'm sure you don't want to. There's people in here that need to be addic uh, 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 delivered from addictions. There are some people going through addictions right now. I feel right now that somebody's going through pornography, addiction, having a lustful demon on the inside of them. But God can deliver you. He can deliver you today. Amen. Don't allow this moment to pass from you. Don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow's not promised. The Bible says, what is your life but even a vapor, a puff of smoke, here one minute and go the next. I'm telling you now, don't want to slip from time to eternity without Jesus covering you with the blood. Amen. The blood of Jesus can save your soul. That's why he put it on an altar for a, an atonement for your soul. I know people right now that are going through gambling addictions, but you can be delivered if you only depend on Him. You got to depend on God for all of your needs. Amen. Some people are more ready to be forgiven and don't want to be delivered. Forgiven and don't want to be delivered. Now that's two different things. I want you to forgive me for what I'm doing wrong. Hey. Hey. But I don't want to be delivered. I want to keep doing it. So some people are sorry because they got caught. I, I remember one time I had to wait on the Lord to deliver me for something. Sometimes the Lord, the Lord will deliver me in a time where you ain't even serving God. And you know God be on your side, but you ain't even serving. I remember one time we was at the, and we get back. I was at the Forest Fair Mall one time. This was in 1993. I went to Forest Fair Mall. And me and my friend had, was up there, just me and him, and these guys from Lincoln Heights. Oh. Woo, a whole bunch of them, too. <laughs> Woo, and I'm from Northside. Yeah, I go to church every Sunday. Okay? So I'm out here, and this girl named Coco, and this is before me and you. <laughs> I'm <laughs> you. Amen. Then this girl named Coco come talking to me. She liked me. She was from Lincoln Heights. And all her friends was there, including her boyfriend. I didn't know she had a boyfriend. I'm like, yeah, what's up, baby? What's up? I'm saying, yeah. I'm all in there. I'm like, yeah, you know. Checking her out. And she, watch this, she was talking to me and everything right in front of her. Oh. And that guy came over to me and said, man, what's up, bro? 
Yeah. Don't what's up with you, man? I said, ain't nothing, man. What's up? And then all his friends came home. Like, Whoa. Wait a minute, ain't nothing. Ain't nothing happened. And my friend, they was like, what you want to do then? I said, man, I'm, I'm all right, man. I'm cool. Man, you trying to talk to my girl, man. You don't know where started. So what's up? I'm like, nothing, nothing. Man, I'm all right. And my friend Arvin, see, God used him. He said, man, what's, man, what's up, man? Well, what's up? What y'all want to do? And he was like, no, what y'all want to do? He's like, hold on. We're going to be right back. We're going to get some help. We're going to go get our dudes. Come on, man. We're going to go get our dudes. I'm off with him. I'm like, man, shoot. We went and got in the car. This was all in the garage. It was, man, it was about, man, I'm telling you, man, it was more than, it was like a crowd of like 100 people there. And maybe like 15 guys from Lincoln Heights. And everybody in that crowd was on their side. Nobody was thinking about north side. <laughs> we just north side, you know. This was 93. And these guys, man, so we ran to the car to go get in. They was like, shoot, we're going to wait on them. Well, hurry up. Bring your crew on down here. They was ready to fight. So we came in the car, man. We get in the car like, boom. I said, man, who we going to get, man? This going to be good, man. Who we going to get? He said, man, we getting out of here, man. We done gone. We done gone. We weren't coming back. Man, you see, God knew people. Give you the wisdom to know what to do and give you the way I told you you'd make a way of escape. You see, so we got to let God fight all battles. Sometimes God deliver you from things. Amen. And you ain't even, you know, you ain't even know God was involved. Didn't even know. But I'm telling you now, there are people in here right now that are struggling with addictions. Some people are going through alcoholism. It's somebody right now, and you know you just you want to put it down, yeah. but it seems like you don't have the power yeah. to do it on your own. Yeah. But I'm telling you that God wants to deliver you from yeah. that. God wants to sink his hands into the inside of you to touch your soul and your heart. And he wants to deliver you if you just say yes. Somebody say yes. God will deliver you. I'm telling you, just believe. Amen. I know that he was going to deliver this young little kid. Amen. His father said, help me. I need your help. If there's anything that you can do, Lord. Help me, he said. Amen. How long has he been in this condition? He said since he was a child. And the guy used to say he had uh, epilepsy. His son did. And his disciples tried to heal him. But he couldn't heal him. Amen. And Jesus said sometimes this healing or this deliverance won't happen except through prayer and fasting. Sometimes you got to give up something. In order for a deliverance. What you going to give up your pride today? Some people need to give up their pride. Because some people won't come to Jesus. Because of their pride. And so drugs. Will never come out of your life. Amen. Bad relationships. Will stick around in your life. Bad relationships are like bad people. Amen. That you allow in your life. And these bad people. Never have nothing good to say. They never have nothing good to talk about. Only thing is bad news. Always talking about somebody. Always sneaking around. And those people used to be me. When I come to the family outings, you better get your purse and put it away. Because I might get it in the hand there and take some of your stuff. But God delivered me. And I'm offering you that today. Can be wiped out. Cancer 